said, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply remove the hose and remove the safety valve. And then I always like to remove the remote just so I don't, it's not in my way. Remove the remote cable. Now I have a clean working area. So the first thing we're going to do is pull off the hopper. The hopper has three pins that hold it on. One on either side here. And then there's a clamp assembly underneath that has another pin. I typically put these in the little Graco toolbox. That way I don't lose them in the mud. <laughs> typically you're not working in a situation where you're on concrete. Uh, you're usually in a mud puddle. So um, unless you're on a floor somewhere, but still it's better to just put them in the box so you don't lose them. So now I'm going to take the pin out from underneath. And then this hopper has an elbow on it. There's two tightening mechanisms. One where it tightens onto the hopper, one where it tightens onto the manifold. Uh, we only want to loosen the one that goes to the manifold because we don't want to change the configuration of that elbow because we know the elbow fits now, right? It's not twisted. It's not in an awkward situation. So we're only going to loosen this top clamp. And then underneath here there's a clamp that releases the hopper. So now all three pins are out, the hopper's released. The only thing holding it on is this rubber boot on the bottom of the manifold. Now that comes off very simply by lifting up on the hopper and pushing down on this end of it. Comes right out. So now we would wash this out um, before we put it back on the pump. So we've taken the hopper off and we're getting ready to take the bottom assembly off. Prior to taking the bottom assembly off, it's very important to turn the machine off. The reason being, if you have somebody down there working on that machine and somebody bumps into it, turns the remote on, uh, something along that line, the, the piston assembly can go up and it will cut your fingers off. You have to be very careful. Safety, always safety. So make sure the machine's off. Sometimes I'll even unplug the machine just to make sure uh, that it can't go on while I'm working on it. So with every Graco S340E you get a ratchet wrench, which is a 5 8 wrench and it works for all components of the manifold. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take off the bottom assembly. Now, this bottom assembly is very heavy and it will fall if you pull the clamps off. So I always keep my hand on one of the clamps while I take these off. All these four bolts are identical, so if you get them mixed up, it's not a problem. So then I can pull one clamp off and the other clamp is holding that bottom assembly. Now if you were to bump that and that fall and your fingers under there it's going to hurt. So what you want to do is you want to hold it with your hand and then pull the clamp off. Then you can simply drop the ball assembly. Now this ball assembly, there's the ball that goes in the bottom. This is a rubber coated steel ball uh, that's specially designed for this pump. Um, this is the cloverleaf manifold assembly and every day it's very important if you look in here you'll see concrete in here, cement in here. You want to get that washed off and you want to grease this with a water-based grease and, and get your ball back in there and put it back in there. If you do not do that after one day it'll be cemented in there. The only way to get it out at that point is to completely disassemble it heat the outside element to expand it and then this will come out. It's not something you want to do. You just want to make sure your crew simply cleans this very well and greases it before it goes back together. Now on these clamps, if you look at the clamps, all four clamps are the same, but where the bolt goes there's a flat assembly that holds the bolt from twisting. If it were in the other side the bolt would simply twist. So you want to make sure and keep it in the right one. So I always set these off to the side before I take off the next assembly.
Now this one you don't have to worry about falling on your fingers. It's actually takes a little work to get it off. Um, so you don't have to, it's not going to fall on you. There again, these clamps are the same as those clamps. They're interchangeable. You don't have to worry about getting them mixed up. There again, these clamps are interchangeable with the other clamps, so you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up. They're all the same. All four clamps, are four, all four nuts are the same. So sometimes this will come off very easily like that. Other times you have to utilize a hammer. Never use a metal hammer against the metal components. You'll break them, you'll bend them. Always use a rubber or a plastic hammer. So after I pulled that off, You'll look here. This is the reason we take it apart every time. There's sand and cement right here. If you don't get that off, it's going to dry there. The first time that piston cup runs up or down within the cylinder wall, it's going to score it. Now you're losing efficiency on the pump. Okay? So you always want to take this completely apart and clean it. Like I say, it takes 10 minutes. So one thing I didn't mention, uh, this comes with a throat seal lubricant. This product is used on all Graco airless sprayers. It simply keeps the throat seal, which is another plastic seal up on top, lubricated. Um, so you want to put some in, just squirt it in the top there, it'll fall to the proper place. And you want to put it in in the morning and then maybe halfway through the day. Uh, how much you want to put in, I don't know. I always err on the side of caution and put more than I think it needs because you always want to keep that wet. If you clean this thing every day like I'm talking about, these piston cups will last months of use. Now that said, if you get hard material here, you want to be very careful. You want to be very careful not to score the top edge or the bottom edge because those are your sealing components within the cylinder. So you just want to use a, a rag, a piece of wood, your finger, something that's not hard enough to scratch that plastic. This is the meat and potatoes of the pump right there bottom plastic. So we just simply take a water hose, we squirt it everywhere in there. There's another ball in here, you want to move it around a little bit, get all the mud out from underneath. Spray in here. Keep the cylinder clean. If you do this every day, it washes up very easily. If there's hard material on it, it's very difficult to get off. There again, make sure you get your ball back in. Grease your clover leaf assembly very well. Put it here and get your gaskets ready. So these gaskets go on the top and bottom. They, there's an O-ring, a Teflon O-ring between all components. There's one on the bottom and one on the top of this cylinder. That said, you'll notice they're round when they come from the factory. Once you clamp them down a couple times, they start to become flat. That doesn't mean they need replacement. These are already flat and this is a new pump. Uh, just because they're flat, they will still seal. What happens is when you step on them and break them is when you need a new one. So as, as long as they're flat and you get it clamped down good, they're going to seal. If they begin to not seal, as you're running your sponge, it'll start squirting water through here. So then you'll know you need new seals. But they, uh, with proper care, they last a very long time. So we're simply going to put this up as far as you can. Sometimes that's hard to put on. There again, utilize a plastic hammer to hit it up as opposed to using a metal hammer. You do not want to bang this, material, this metal. I want to make sure my O-ring is clean. Okay, so now I'm going to put the top clamp on. There's a design gap in between the clamps. You want to keep that relatively even. It doesn't have to be exact. But if one side bottoms out before the other side, it will clamp unevenly. So you always want a gap in there. 
uh, you want a gap in the front and the back. Another thing too, you know, you, a lot of times you're in the sand and mud, you want to keep these clean. It'll just make them a lot easier to go on to the bolts. How tight? Good and snug, but you don't want to over tighten them. You'll know if they're not tight enough, they will leak water. So you just want them good and snug. So this bottom one, there, there again, this is pretty heavy. One person can do it, but here's the method to do it with one person. Get a clamp in one hand, get the clover leaf assembly in the other. You simply put it up where it goes, and then you put one side on. Once you put that side on, you can let go of it, and it'll stay. What you want to be careful of is you don't want to hit that clamp with this clamp as you're putting it on because the whole assembly will fall. So I'll simply put your hand against the clamp and then put the other one on. And again, once the clamps are on, there's no way for the bottom assembly to fall on you. Okay, so now we're going to put the, the hopper assembly back on. We've already cleaned out the pump assembly. Now we're going to put the hopper assembly back on and run the sponge. Now to do that, make sure everything's out of your way, you simply slide it underneath. And if you look down here on the saddles, the saddles go right over where the pins go. That said, usually you have to come around here and move your clamp out of the way so everything sits properly. Once your clamp's out of the way, every, the, the pin should go in relatively easily if everything's in the right configuration. If you're having trouble getting your pins in, it's simply because you didn't get the clamp out of the way. So we're simply, we have the hopper in the proper area, we're just going to put both pins in the legs. And then we're going to clamp the pump, the hopper, we're going to clamp the hopper back up into the pump assembly. So the clamp will pull it up, but you sometimes have to guide the elbow, the rubber elbow, onto the manifold, onto the lower assembly. So then you pick it up. There you put your safety pin back in. And then what I always like to do is lift this pump up and I want to check that this rubber boot assembly is up into all the way shouldered onto the lower pump assembly. And it's not. So I want to pick it up until it does. Sometimes you have to take your rubber hammer and hit it a little bit. Until it seats properly. Once it seats properly, you can tighten it. and we're ready to run the sponge. So now we're going to put our safety assembly back on. You always want to put your sponge in the hose. If you put your sponge here, that sponge will stay right there. The water will run right by it. I don't know why. It does it on big pumps, small pumps, any pump you ever did use. The ball will stay right there. So always put it in the hose before we put it on. Another rule of thumb on clamps, never hit these with a hammer, they'll break off. If you're having a hard time getting it on, you can simply bump the other side, opposite side of the hose, and they go on very easily. But you never want to hit the ears with a hammer, they'll break off. Then they're very di difficult to get on. Okay, so we're filling up the hopper with water. Whenever you turn on the pump, there's a five second delay 
before the light goes on steady. Once it goes on steady, the pump's in operation. So that's real important to know anytime you're around the pump or with the nozzle that it, there's going to be a five second delay before the pump is ready to operate. That said, if there's a problem within the pump, the power, anything, this light will give an error code. There's a chart that comes with the manual that tells you what that error code is. It's very good in troubleshooting. Very rarely does that go off, does the machine go off and you get a trouble code, but when it does, if you simply look in the manual, you'll be able to find out what the problem is and then call customer service or you'll know how to fix the problem. Very, very self-explanatory in the manual. So we're going to fill our hopper up with water. Uh, we want to try and fill it up at least halfway before we run our sponge. Now we have the sponge in the hose. Hopper's half full of water. We're simply going to run it from the remote. The sponge will clean out any excess material and aggregate that's left in the hose. I always like to run the ball twice just to make sure it gets all the aggregate out. So there again, I'm going to put the ball in the hose as opposed to putting it in the manifolds assembly. Now this time I'm going to open up that valve to make sure it's clean. And there's our ball. You can see the second time some dirty material still came out, so it will always clean a little better the second time. And like I say, that's, this is a 10 minute process. Uh, once you do it on a daily basis, you'll get to where it's only 10 minutes to keep your pump clean. We know it's gonna pump tomorrow with mud because it pumped the sponge today.